What do you do to avoid overfitting when you perform your trading optimizations? Well, in this episode, I'll be providing you with six practical steps that I take, and these are all things that you can replicate to improve your own optimizations. Welcome back. In the first three episodes of the series, we looked at some of the major challenges and issues we face as algo traders when performing optimizations. After watching those, I'm hoping you now have a lot more insight into the potential pitfalls than you did previously. But in this episode, we're going to move away from the issues and start to look at the solutions. I'm going to provide some real practical advice on what you can do to increase the statistical significance of your optimizations and also avoid overfitting. And if you follow this guidance, your process will be significantly more effective at extracting those parameter values that will serve you best as you move your trading system into live. Now, because of the amount of content for these six techniques, this episode is going to be split across two weeks. I'm going to cover the first three things that you can do this week and then three more next week. This week's techniques all revolve around how you can increase sample size, so getting more trades in your optimization. And then next week I'll cover three really important techniques to reduce the effects of noise overfitting and events overfitting. So let's take a look at step one. This is all about increasing the number of trades by increasing the duration of the backtest. Let's quickly remind ourselves why sample size is so important. In episode one, we saw that large numbers of trades reduces the effects of random chance, helping the parameter values with the genuine edges to rise over those that have little or no edge at all. This was then backed up by the statistical power analysis study we saw in episode two. This showed that with bigger sample sizes, we increase the probability of extracting those parameters that are in the upper standard deviations. Finally, in episode three, we saw that larger sample sizes also mean that overfitting is much less likely to occur. So for all these reasons, you really need to take this seriously and understand that high sample sizes are essential. The more trades, the more reliable and statistically significant your process will be. Now, increasing the duration of your back tests will increase the number of trades executed. But of course, you'll need sufficient historical price data loaded into your back testing software to do this. This might mean you need to source data yourself if your broker doesn't supply a sufficient duration of data. I tend to use a period of 10 years in total for my in-sample and out-of-sample testing. And because my trades tend to last somewhere between one and 24 hours, then M1 data is absolutely fine for me. Clearly, if your trade durations are much shorter, based on maybe a scalping style strategy, then you might need tick data instead. Personally, I source my data from Tick Data Suite for this, but there are many other data sources out there, some free and some that will charge. Now, in relation to increasing the duration of tests, I know that some of you will say that the dynamics of instruments changes over time, and so it isn't right to test on longer periods. And yes, you're right that market dynamics and price action personality do change, well, I consider that it's better to use 10 years of data and have statistically reliable results that, yes, might be a little out of tune with the current market dynamics than it is to use one year of data and get results that are statistically insignificant and therefore fairly meaningless. Also, there's a technique we can use that helps to ensure that your parameters do stay in tune with changing market dynamics across longer durations of data. This is called walk forward optimization or walk forward analysis. And I'm a really big fan of this technique and I'll be covering this in a future episode. So now let's move on to the second thing you can do to increase sample size. Click on the link here to start part 4.2.